Welcome to another video. Just like the quadratic formula was obtained for, from a general quadratic equation, let's try to find a formula to solve this kind of equation, which we typically use the Lambert W function for. Um, the only problem with you using a formula for, even like in the quadratic formula cases, it just takes out the fun in the whole thing. However, um, you're gonna get some other things because I usually would just stick to the principal uh, branch of the Lambert W function. But because I'm using the formula now, I have to talk about the other branch that gives us real answers. And that's the advantage. Disadvantage, no fun. You're just plugging in numbers. So our first mission is to rewrite this expression so that we can get something like this and then we can solve it this way. So we have to rewrite this to look somehow like this. Okay, that's the fun of it because then you can do all kinds of algebraic manipulations. So what I'm gonna do first is isolate this. So I'm gonna say a to the x will be equal to b minus x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by this. If I divide this by this, I'm gonna get one on this side. And if I divide this by this, it's just going to be b minus x divided by this, which is the same thing as a to the negative x. So one good thing that we see is that this and this are the same. But I need this b to be up here. I want this and this to be the same. So I need to put a plus b here so that this would be b minus x and this would be b minus x also. So what I need to do is multiply both sides by a times b. So watch this. If I multiply this by a to the b rather, then what I have here becomes minus x plus b, which is exactly what's here. And I have to multiply this also by a to the b. So let's multiply by a to the b. So now I have a to the b equals b minus x times a to the, if I add the two exponents, it becomes b minus x. Nice. So it's beginning to look like this. The only problem is what is here is e, but what is here is a. I need to change this to e. And remember what we say, that any expression or any term can be written in terms of e. You just need to write it this way because this cancels this. So we're gonna replace a with e to the ln of a. So this is gonna become b minus x times, this becomes e to the ln of a raised to power b minus x. And clearly, this is the same thing as, you see, I'm, I've not changed anything. We can multiply these two together and that becomes b minus x times e to the b minus x ln of a. All we need to perfect this is to make sure what is here is what is here. But the only difference is this is being multiplied by ln of a. This doesn't have ln of a, so we just need to multiply this by ln of a, which means we have to multiply this to by ln of a. ln of a is equal to b minus x ln of a e to the b minus x ln of a. So now we can take the w of both sides. So we have the w of a to the b ln of a will now be equal to the w of this, but the w of this is gonna give us back b minus x. Sorry, b minus x ln of a. So if I just want to isolate, this is the only term containing x, right? The only part containing x, so I'm going to isolate b minus x. So I have b minus x will be equal to this divided by this, which is gonna be the w of a to the b ln of a divided by ln of a. And if we want to get x, if we move x over here and bring this here, we end up with this formula that says x is equal to b 
minus the W of A raised to power B natural log of A divided by the natural log of A. This is the general formula for what we are doing. And this works if this is positive. If this is not positive, then it means we have to just take the negative of what we have here. That's the only thing. Everything here becomes, has a negative version of it. Now you can start by just changing the sign by minus, go through this process, this is what you're gonna get. So, um, and this goes here, okay? Or you can say, x is equal to minus b minus the w of no, this doesn't change to plus, it is still minus, okay, of negative a to the b ln of a. That's the other thing that takes up a minus, natural log of a. This is the graph of the Lambert W function. These two branches are the ones that give us real answers. That is when you try to find the real values that are solutions to any equation that looks like this. These are the only two branches that provide you with real solutions. The others will give you solutions that are not real, but I want to focus on these two. Now, typically if your answer is greater than zero, okay, if any value of x you're calculating is greater than zero, this guy will give you your real answer. Now, there are others that will give you other answers, but if you want the real answer, the zero branch will give you the real answer. But, if the value x that you're trying to calculate is more likely stuck between negative one over e and zero, this tiny little gap here, if your answer is capable of coming from there, then you may get your answer from the zero branch or from the negative one branch. Now this is the negative one branch. It gives you answers that are from negative one over e to zero. It never touches zero, okay? It never touches zero, but it keeps going and all the values are negative. As you can see, all the values are negative depending on what the function you're dealing with. So that's why we have this one because this one clearly will generate some negative value, okay? will generate some negative value for you and let's keep it this way, okay? Now, can you get negative values from this? Definitely, but it depends on what the values you plugged in are. But this is to guarantee that we cover every value from here all the way that way. Now, there are other branches. I'm not interested in that. If you're a mathematician, yeah, that's your business. Now, let's try and solve these equations. This, this, or this. You know what I want to do? I want to solve, I actually want to solve this one because it's been um, of interest to me from, for a long time now. And I'm going to use a formula to solve it. And like I said, anytime you get a question like this, just try to rewrite it in this way and then use the formula. So let's do number one. Let's look at this. We want it to look exactly like this. So we need a number here raised to power x. We can actually rewrite this to be equal to e squared raised to power x. You see that? Plus x equals e squared. So from here, we know what our a is. We know a is equal to e squared right there. And we know what our b is b equals e squared also. So what's the answer? Well, our answer x is equal to b, which is e squared minus a raised to power b. This raised to power this, that's gonna be e squared raised to power e squared. Let me write it this way. Ha ha ha. You see that? And multiplied by the natural log of e squared, all divided by the natural log of e squared. But we know that this is e squared minus w of 
This simplifies to 2 because this cancels this. We have 2. This simplifies to this 2 will multiply. That's e times 2 squared. So that's going to be the w of 2e to 2e squared. Ha, 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 ha. Over 2. We have x will be equal to 1. e squared minus Oh, let's write it this way. If I put these all together, you can write it as one half of 2e squared minus the w of 2e to the 2e squared. What a beautiful answer. Look at that. That's a lot of e's. <laughs> Let's do number three. I intentionally skipped number two because I want you to do it by yourself if you're interested. By the way, you should get two answers for this. And clearly, one of the answers is, well, you can just look at it clearly and you see what one of the answers is, but there are two answers. When you zoom in, you're gonna see that there's a second answer. Yeah, find it using the formula. Let's do the third one and end this video. So for number three, we have to rewrite this in a very nice way. So what I'm gonna say is, let's write it so that it looks like this or this. And we're gonna say that, let's move this over, let's leave zero here, and then we have zero equals, we can write this actually as e to the negative x, right? And we say minus x. Oh, that's this, this one, right? Or maybe not. Oh, it looks like this because the sign here is a sign here. And we can say, let, let's say, let t be equal to negative x. So at the end of the day, we'll just put a negative around it. Let's make our lives easier. So we can say that this expression is e to the t plus t equals zero. So a is equal to e and b is equal to zero. Nice, because those are the two numbers that we need and we're solving this in terms of t. So we can say our answer using the formula. This same formula is what we're using. I thought we were going to need to use the other formula, but with this smart substitution, we don't have to. Okay, so we got t will be equal to b sorry, b, which is zero, minus the w of a raised to power b, which is gonna be e raised to power zero, natural log of a, natural log of e, over the natural log of e. This is so easy. Oh, it was easier than what I was thinking. Come on. And what does this tell us? This tells us that our answer is gonna be negative um, w of e raised to power 0 is 1, that's 1 times, natural log of e is 1, oh, divided by natural log of e is 1, no, so t equals negative w of 1 over 1. Can you imagine? That's our t. But what did we say t was? We said t is negative x. So which is equal to negative x? So if you cancel both negatives, it clearly says x is the w of 1. Now, what is the w of 1? This is what you call the omega constant because that is what you're gonna get. Have you seen this before? Yes, actually the value of this is 0 0.56714 and all that, but I'm gonna stop here just so you can remember. 0 0.567 is the omega constant because this is the number that you can use to multiply e 
race to the Omega and your answer is gonna be one. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Remember to do exercise number two and just tell me what the other number is apart from the very obvious one, which I'm not gonna say, which I just said. See you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.